In this video, you're going to hear two epistemologists comment on Alvin Plantinga's evolutionary argument against naturalism. If you don't know what that argument is, here's a 60-second summary from Dr. Andrew Moon, an epistemologist and professor of philosophy at Virginia Commonwealth University. So this argument is defended by and formulated by Alvin Plantinga. Uh, suppose you're a theist. Uh, the point is that you think your brain and its mechanisms, your cognitive faculties, were created by God so that you can know truths about the world. That's not the evolutionary argument against naturalism. That's just to get you thinking. Here's the actual evolutionary argument against naturalism. So suppose you're a naturalist, then you won't think that God designed your brain or your cognitive faculties. Humans came to exist by a purely naturalistic evolutionary process. Okay, how likely would it be then that your brain would be well designed to form true beliefs and knowledge about the world? But planning I argue said this would be unlikely. And if he's right, then you should think it's unlikely that your cognitive faculties can reliably form true beliefs about the world. And if that's right, then the naturalist should no longer trust that his brain is reliable and hence, the naturalist shouldn't trust any of his beliefs, including his belief in naturalism. To hear a much more detailed defense of this argument, check out my full interview with Dr. Moon. It's link number one in the description of this video. Now you're going to hear from another epistemologist and professor of philosophy at Western Michigan University, Dr. Tim McGrew. He's raised an objection to planning his evolutionary argument against naturalism. I've extracted this clip of him raising the objection from another video, and the link to that video is in the description. It's link number two. But the question then that would arise is, are, uh, is the epistemic warrant that we have for our beliefs simply the fact that they are produced by faculties that are producing a agreeably high proportion of truths over falsehoods, or does it have something more intrinsic to do with the evidence accessible to the individual? And so, the, but actually, the way that you just put it does uh, lead me to maybe modify my statement to this extent. If one accepts epistemic externalism, then I think Plantinga's version of the argument does pose a problem for the externalist. But I do think that it's tightly bound up with that internalist externalist dispute, which is a, a really live issue. Yeah. Okay. The objection that Dr. McGrew is raising is basically that the evolutionary argument against naturalism depends on the truth of externalism. Is this a good objection? I don't think so. And in this final clip, you will hear Dr. Andrew Moon explain why. All right, the first objection, this is an objection that I've heard um, some people on Facebook raise. And also I've, I've heard in a little video clip on YouTube, uh, Tim McGrew raised this objection. And that is basically, yeah. it looks like this argument depends on a controversial position uh, view in oh. epistemology called externalism. Uh, and if you're not an externalist, if you're an internalist, then that's an, that gives you a reason, you know, a way out of the argument. So why don't you explain the difference between internalism and externalism first, and then, you know, oh. respond to this objection. So there's a few ways internalism and externalism are defined in the epistemological literature. And here's one common way. Uh, internalism, what you're justified or rational in believing, uh, directly depends solely on what's in your mind. Another way to think of it is take anybody who's a mental duplicate of you. They all have all the same sensations, the way things appear to them, the way things seem to, uh, to them. Uh, they'll be just as justified in believing whatever they believe as whatever you believe. Uh, externalism is the view that what you're justified in believing does not directly depend solely on what's going on in your mind, okay? So some externalists will say that what you're justified in believing will also depend on other things like whether your belief is formed by a reliable process or by a properly functioning a cognitive faculties, and that's gonna be playing in this view. Now, whether it's like, whether your beliefs and sensations and feelings, whether, or your other mental properties, whether they're formed by properly functioning mechanisms or reliable faculties, Notice that's kind of outside of your mind. And that's kind of outside of your first person point of view. And externalists want to say that sort of thing matters for whether your just, belief is justified. So, um, yeah. So internalists deny that. Internalists will deny that whether your belief is formed by a reliable process or properly functioning faculties is relevant to whether a belief is justified. 
Okay, so here would be an objection someone could give. EAAN concludes that naturalists have unjustified beliefs because their beliefs are not formed by reliable faculties. Whether a belief is formed by reliable faculties, that's an external factor, something outside or external to the mind. So EAAN assumes that externalism is true. So internalists should not uh, be fine planning as argument convincing. Okay, so here's the response. Um, I think there's uh, a confusion here and we need to distinguish between two claims. Claim one is the claim that the, is this, the naturalist faculties are unreliable. That's one claim. And claim two is that naturalists have a reason to think their faculties are unreliable. Okay. Now it's important to note that EAAN is only making claim two. Okay, it's making the second claim, not the first claim. If it was making the first claim, then it would be assuming externalism. But uh, since it's only making the second claim, it's not assuming externalism. So, and both internalists and externalists worry about defeaters having reasons to think that your beliefs were formed unreliably. Um, they both think that those are relevant to whether their beliefs are justified. So um, this objection kind of just misunderstands what the argument is saying. It's not making, saying claim two, it's saying claim one. So it's a little bit mind boggling. If anything, internalists should be more worried about this because it's your belief, that's something internal, your belief about how your cognitive faculties came about given naturalism and evolution, that should be worrying. Um, and that's an internal thing, the fact that you believe it. If anything, there's a case to be made that some externalists won't care about this, but in general, most externalists do care about avoiding defeaters. All right, that's it. To hear more objections to the evolutionary argument against naturalism, check out my full interview with Dr. Andrew Moon. Thanks for watching, and keep exploring Christianity.